Um, I want to shift gears because we have uh, Senator Nina Turner on the line, and I want to say good morning to her. She is running, uh, of course, for Ohio's 11th congressional district. Um, friend of the show, um, a fighter for liberation, I like to call her. Sister Turner, thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? Good morning, Brother Dixon. I'm fine. How are you? I am. I am blessed and um, I am happy to be speaking with you. I wish that we could segue with something a little bit less traumatic than another black life snatched away by the policing agencies. And obviously, I know you're running for the seat in uh, in Ohio and we'll discuss that. But I just want to get your your thoughts on this. Yet another black man, another black person killed by the police. Yeah, and, I, and just being able to have an opportunity to listen to what Sister Georgia was saying, it makes so much sense about how people jump out there. And always when there is prejudgment, African-Americans are going to get the worst end of that prejudgment. We're never assumed. We are always assumed to be guilty no matter what the situation is. And that presumption of innocence does not uh is, is, is it does not uh, speak to us. It doesn't cater to us whether we are the victim or the perpetrator. It doesn't matter what role we are in in any said situation. It is always assumed, as uh, I think it was Brother Ice Cube who said in, in one of his rap lyrics, my skin is my sin. Uh, that mm. continues to be the case. It's been the case from the beginning, at least our experience on this continent in whole uh, from our, our ancestors to this very moment. And it is unfortunate. Yes, it is very sad that that happened that no-knock warrant should not have happened in that case. We do understand that if somebody is in imminent danger, the key word is imminent danger, then there may be a few cases, very few cases, where no-knock warrants may be necessary, but they are not necessary in the overwhelming majority of the cases. Right. And my God, if somebody has a gun in their house or in their apartment, in their place at night or early in the morning because they sleep in, that is their right to do so. And That's I right. love Sister George's point about whether or not what 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 it uh, say all them Second Amendment folks. Mm. Do you believe that Free it yet. applies to black folks? And That's so right. we all know that Brother Killer Mike talks about that all the time, about the Second Amendment. We know people like uh, 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 the uh, uh, Ida B. Wells, for example, Barnett who was an investigative journalist who laid it down, who called to question lynching in this country of African-American folks. And she firmly believed that black folks need to, to carry. And there are black people in this country who do believe in the Second Amendment and right. believe that we should have the right. If we think about the Black Panthers, too, for example, that was the That's same right. thing. So all of that Second Amendment goes out the window when it's black folks having, having the gun. And whether or not we are assumed or presumed to not have the right to carry a gun. We know that there were rules on the book, both de facto and de jure, laws and, and, and in practice, where black folks were not allowed to have guns in this country, even though, and so their Second Amendment rights were trampled upon. So which is it? We cannot have it both ways. So, Brother Ben, I'm glad that you're um, covering this. And, Dag, Sister Georgia, you, you, you laid it down. I mean, those should be the steps. Call in the family first. Ask them some questions before you jump out there on the limb. And whether or not the gun was registered or not was not necessarily the point in that moment you know you can deal with that after the fact like if it was a non-registered gun or he wasn't supposed to have it let him live and let's go and yes. write that out in the judicial system that's right right that should right. not at any point be a death sentence a no. summary execution on the spot um and, and you know and and i <clears throat> It's difficult to move away from these stories because we have to be persistent and consistent for justice. Um, I, and, and that's something that you have fought for for a long time, Sister Turner. We, we've talked and you've been on the show. You are a fighter for liberation. Um, I've lived in a lot of places. I feel like I've lived a lot of lives, but I know 11th, I know the 11th district well. Cleveland uh, is my family home. Um, tell us about the race there and um, your strategy because we, we need some victories. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we really do. It's been two weeks and a day since I announced and we're working really hard. We are waiting now to see what the district will look like because the Ohio Supreme Court, and rightfully so, ruled both the legislative lines and the congressional lines unconstitutional. A GOP legislate, a legislature run them up per usual. Uh, to quote my grandmother, she would talk about people who've lost their ever-loving minds. Republicans have done just that all across this country and they gerrymandering the hell out of districts, which is 
is wrong because politicians should not be able to pick their constituents. It should be the other way around and we have to deal with that entire system. That being said, what I do know about the district is that all of Cleveland will be in the new 11th Congressional District. So it will be a new district, new people, new time. And my campaign this time around will have the opportunity really deep opportunity to get our message out about the needs of the people in this district, in the state, and also in this country. We're going to run hard. The reasons, the same reasons exist why I ran in 2021 are still relevant today. People are suffering. People do not believe their material conditions are not changing and people need a fighter and a champion and somebody not just to fight for them, but fight with them alongside mm. of them. And yeah. that is why I am running again, Brother Ben and Sister George. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're running again. I I can't lie. I was very confident that you were going to win when you ran yeah. last time and uh, was a bit disappointed at some of the politicians who present themselves as for us that stepped up and, and used some of their political um, yeah. capital to back other people. Um, could you just share with us what that experience was like for you yeah. and from your vantage point, your perspective, why you think there was uh, a huge push in that district specifically to go with a different candidate? Yeah, and, and this district, you know, historic, it was created uh, because we had two African American champions. They were brothers, both Mayor Carl B. Stokes and Congressman Louis Stokes. And Congressman Louis Stokes was, in fact, the first African American. Uh, congressman from the great state of Ohio. So what it took to even get the 11th congressional district. Sister Georgia, I do believe that there are forces out there that do not, absolutely do not want the people to have a champion. So it's not just people like me in Ohio. It's happening all over the country that when there is a progressive candidate, the corporate is from both sides pounce because they do not want to see the requisite change. They do not want to have voices that are unbought and unbossed, to quote a mm. Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. And so the forces right. did converge. And it's not so much that people swooped in to support one candidate over another. There were 13 people in this race and it really came down to two of us, but it's the how they did it. Uh, the fact mm -hmm. that this is a solidly democratic district, there was really no need to get engaged in this race in the ways that they did. There's a difference right. uh, from, there's a different kind of energy when you are for somebody, you know, you're using right. that energy to push for, versus if you're using energy to be totally against. And there was clearly a anybody but Nina campaign launched. I was mm. warned after I announced that they were coming for me, the they being the special interest uh, groups and the corporatist types, whether they're Republican or Democrat, that they were coming for me with all they had. And that proved to be absolutely true. Uh, we do have some data that says that thousands of Republicans, by way of examples, actually voted in this special election. Let us not mm. forget that that election last year in August was the only election going on in the mm -hmm. entire United States of America. And so that allowed the anti-forces to really coalesce and come at Sister Turner hard. I swear to you, every single day at a certain point in the latter weeks of that election that I would come home, there was some negative hit piece on me or billboards all over the city of people maligning you know, my name and also my reputation and, and absolutely smearing me. And that, you know, that, that ha people want to say that all is fair in, in politics, but at a certain point, it is not fair. And to try to caricature me as an African-American woman and a chocolate African-American woman mm. uh, at that is really wrong. You know, there's a recent article that came out in the Cleveland Plain Dealer about two weeks ago now that showed that there was a pack created to uh, to to go after the new mayor uh, to really hurt him and and they it was really anti-black and really racist and that there were local people involved in giving to that pack to do that to him now he was mm. victorious but how how low will you go I mean that will become mm. the question you should do everything to win but not anything to win and some of those same forces that were revealed in going after the new mayor uh, mayor Justin Bibb in the way that they did darkening his face we know this stuff is as old as time, right? What they do to African Americans, and especially if you are a darker hue African American, to invoke fear, local, you know, the Haslams, 
uh, mm-hmm. other other people were involved in that. These are some of the same people who supported uh, my number one opponent. So again, uh, we we we're gonna fight. We're gonna take the message to the people that this time, in terms of the the hurt. I mean, we have a tax credit. <laughs> they expired, right? A child tax mm-hmm. credit expired. Uh, just was revealed that community colleges will not be free, that we will not make that investment. But meanwhile, back in the halls of Congress, they always find a bipartisan way to increase funding for war making. But That's they right. don't find the way to be bipartisan in lifting the people of this nation, the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class, and taking care of, speaking to, and pushing policies right. that answer to their material needs. Mm. So the reason, mm. the mission is still the same. Mm. Mm. Sister Turner, um, I know we have you for just a few more minutes. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about all the things that you're fighting for and that you're fighting against. Because when I hear you mention the tactics that they used in in the district last time around, I I really kind of want to unpack that for the audience because... I mean, they did a little bit of everything, including darkening your skin even more to make you seem whatever they were trying to make you seem. Let's unpack that a little bit. We're going to go to a quick break. Uh, We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show right after this. Wrestling between two futures. Do we sacrifice the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class to protect the ultra wealthy? Or do we treat our people as America's greatest asset and ensure everyone has a real chance to live a good life? Families are struggling with higher gas and food prices, stagnant wages and shrinking benefits, while corporations make record profits. These are unprecedented times. Our leaders can't settle for just enough. They must fight for what we deserve. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress because we deserve a voice for change in Washington. A leader who is on the side of the people, not out for the powerful or out for themselves. A leader who understands that health care has been denied to millions of Americans for far too long and will fight for Medicare for all. A leader who knows poverty is a policy choice and the minimum wage must be raised to a living wage. Who won't take a dime from special interest packs or do their bidding. You deserve a leader who is from here, who knows what it's like to grow up and live their life in this community. Who has stood up for reproductive justice and served on the front lines of the fight for criminal justice reform and voting rights. Not for days, but for decades. A member of Congress that stands shoulder to shoulder with leaders like Bernie Sanders, unapologetically to fight for working people and speak truth to power. And here's the truth. Greater Cleveland needs a change maker, not someone who just go along to get along. We can put an agenda through Congress that puts working families first, and that's worth fighting for. Something you can feel. Good union jobs, expanded health care, child care, and climate justice. Winning the battle against Republicans and the holdouts in our party will only happen when we put it all on the line for everyday people. An America as good as this promise is worth fighting for. Our children are worth fighting for. Our future is worth fighting for. Mm. Sister Turner, there's a million and one things about your policies that I want to discuss and that I respect, but it's the matching spec, the, the, the matching glasses, the frames for me. It just is like I, I absolutely love. I mean, and I'm looking at it's just I, I I hate to go there, but it's just a it's a beautiful video, and it just touches the surface of the depth of what you bring, which is why I have and continue to support you. You said a line in that commercial that I got to dig into. You said poverty is a policy choice. Can we talk about that for a minute? Because the government actually did some good last uh, in 2020, uh, 2021 by the, the checks, cutting down childhood poverty. Um, we can end poverty if we decide to. Talk about that for me. Yeah, that is exactly right. And I heard you giving the amen. Mm, mm, <laughs> it, was, it was touching my spirit. You know. Mine's too. Every time I I watch it and listen to it, it really does. And that is my mission uh, summed up. It is a it is a poverty is a policy choice and we can make new choices. We know that not only the checks, as you laid out in the CARES Act, but also the child tax credit. 
cut childhood poverty in half. Now, I would argue when you got a good thing going, keep building on it. Don't go the other way. Let's go for 100% because cutting it in half means that we still have more work to do. But instead of building on that, we back in a situation right now where the child tax credit is gone right now because you have members of Congress, particularly on the Senate side, who cannot get it together. We can absolutely make sure that people have paid family and medical leave, Dixon. I mean, look at what is happening with the pandemic. So many people who punch a clock for a living cannot take off, no matter how sick they are or somebody in their family, because they won't get paid. What is wrong Mm. with making sure in the United States of America, let's follow the lead of some of the other industrialized nations and ensure that people have paid family and medical leave, that people have the requisite time that they need to take to deal with some of the personal challenges that happen just because you are a human being. What's wrong with investing in in, in two-year, I want to see universities too, but let's go ahead and start with two-year colleges. We just got word that even that is stripped out, that they're not going to make two-year colleges tuition free, which would cost about, I think about $45 billion dollars Uh, over five years. It is worth the investment. If we look at it as the way that we invest in K through 12 education and we make it pre-K to to at least two-year college, we have a social contract. Brother Ben, that doesn't make, we are making an investment. What is wrong with having a living wage? They caved on that right away and blamed the damn uh, parliamentarian. So again, (laughs) if we make different choices, then we will have different outcomes. Absolutely. And I'm thinking about um, the race, the, the recent race. Um, and I came up to Cleveland to cover it. And and I saw the negative ads um, all over the city. I, I mean, they really came after you. And I and I, I, I think it's meaningful for us to actually lay that out. They have been coming after you specifically. This is not this is not a, a fake grievance. You know how sometimes when preachers in church, they always preach about haters and a lot of people you don't even have. They don't have haters. You literally have people with political power who followed you all around the country, back to your district to make sure that you did not win on behalf of the people. Why are there so many people afraid of your campaign? Because they know that my only special interest will be the everyday people in my district and in this country, that if having Medicare for all is wrong, I don't want to be right. If wanting the minimum wage increase to a living wage is wrong, I don't want to be right. If standing up and saying unequivocally that voting rights must be protected and expanded is wrong, I don't want to be right. You know, I, 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 and they and they know this. So they know that I'm not going to equivocate on these issues. And that is why they launched an anybody but Nina campaign. It was real, Brother Ben. And, you know, because you were here, you got to see it for yourself. It was absolutely real. And the numbers, the phone calls that I got from people who are in the know, who had their ear to the ground, who even talked to some of the people who said we coming at her. They made mm. it very clear that it was going to be anybody but Nina. 13 people in the race and they came at me with everything that they had to try to stop me. And and why? Because I want Medicare for all, because I call out injustice, because I say to both my party and these recalcitrant uh, Republicans that we must do better, should do better. And if you don't want to serve the people, get the hell out of office. Is that that's why you coming at me in that way? (laughs) And because when I my emotion fits the need. So for all the pearl clutchers and the tie tighteners, get over it. You know, they they tried to use angry black woman. They did use angry black woman. Well, I'm here to state I am mad as hell about the suffering of the people in my district and in this country. And baby, if you're not mad, God bless you. But there's some angry folks out here and we need to challenge that anger and use it to push for change. You know, I think uh, Mrs. Rosa Park was angry that day. That she said, I ain't getting up. I ain't moving. Not this day. I done did it too many times. I'm not doing it today. It's clear that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was angry as he analyzed this country and called to question its very very moral fiber when it came to Mm. materialism, racism, poverty. Yes, he did. Minister Malcolm X was angry. Hell, people who are angry and use that anger to righteously indict (laughs) suffering. To call it out. 
Nothing wrong huh? with that. And a whole host of other folks, you know, Daisy Bates, angry, another angry black woman, you know, in the in the civil rights uh, movement. So many people, Dixon, that we can name. They were mad as hell and they weren't going to take it anymore. They mm. channel, channel, challenged this country and they channeled their anger for what is right, for what is just and for what is good. And my last point to this, if you were drowning in the middle of an ocean, who do you want to come and save you? or to help save your life? Do you want the person that got to clutch the pearls or tighten the tie or make sure that everything is all prim and proper? Or do you want the person that's going to throw caution to the wind and no matter what it takes, get out there and help to save your life? That's how I'm rolling. I am a hell-raising humanitarian, and I know that my style and affect is not for everybody, but too many people, whether they're black or brown or, or Asian or the swirl in between, whether they Jew or Gentile, Muslim, atheist, agnostic, young, seasoned, gay, straight. It doesn't matter. People are suffering in this right. country and we can't turn a blind eye to it. And we don't need people who just going to go along to get along or put their finger up in the wind to see which way the wind is going. Decide to support things like Medicare for all when it's popular, but ain't going to do a damn thing to make sure that it mm. actually happens. We don't need leaders like that. We need people who are going to actually make a sacrifice, even if it causes them some pain. And brother, mm. brother Dixon, that, that's why Sister Turner running. Yeah, people are suffering. They out in the ocean drowning, and they need somebody to radically come uh. out there. Oh man, you need somebody to walk on water. You, 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 you. One, one other person uh, got angry uh, and chased the capitalists out of the temple. Jesus. Come um, on. Tell us before you, you get out of here, because if I had a, if I had an organ, you, you were preaching just a second ago. Uh, but but before you get out of here, I want you to tell the people how they can support you, where they can go and uh, get more information about you, but also talk about that liberation part of your faith, because you're doing this as because I, I we've talked. I believe that you're doing this as a testament to your faith that doesn't want to see anybody marginalized or oppressed. Speak to those two things. Nobody. No, I don't want to see anybody. You know, uh, one a poet, Langston Hughes, asked the question, what happens to a dream deferred? I'm just working with a whole bunch of other folks because not one person can do it alone to right. ensure at least to create an environment where very few people have to ask the question about what happens to a dream deferred. And that is the workaday people of this country, the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class, no matter how they identify, no matter what they bring to the table, no matter where their ancestors hail from, that they don't have to ask those questions. And for me, I am on assignment. It is like being a missionary. I mean, this calling is all on me. Yeah. I, I couldn't right. stop doing the work. Even if I tried and, and I don't have to have it's not about having a fancy title to do the work. But what other levels where are where are the places that we can shake things up? Everybody has a role to play. And I do okay. firmly believe that my district, which is the poor, the city of Cleveland is the poorest city of its size in the United States right now. Definitely needs a change maker, somebody that has a vision that will provide provision for the people. And when you are a visionary, you don't go with the status quo. You can't say that this is. You know, 50 percent, for example, cutting the child tax credit and cutting poverty by 50 percent is good enough. You say, hey, man, I'm glad we did it. Now, what about the other 50 percent? What about you know, it? You don't. Yeah. You don't what about it? So people can find Nina Turner dot com time, tra talent and treasure. We need it all. This is going to be a fight as it was in 2021. Those same forces are already back out. They will try to do the th same thing in 2022. But we have an awesome opportunity because this is the regular election cycle. Constitutional offices on the ballot are on the ballot in Ohio. A United States Senate office is on the ballot in Ohio. And I do not believe that all of those Republicans who crossed over in the special election will cross mm. over this time. Because because they need to get their nominees in place. Mm, if those of right. us, if you believe, if you believe that we can have better, that we can do better, that you deserve better, then I need you to fight with me and help me make it to the United States Congress. I will be elected from this district, but my service will be to this entire country and you won't mm. have to wonder where I stand. Now we might not always agree on every single issue, but you won't have to worry where Sister Turner stands. It is going to be for the marginalized, the dispossessed, the people who are down and out, the people who are hurting the most, who need to know that somebody actually gives a damn 
about mm. the suffering and who will help to make some crooked paths straight to help them be able to live out their greatest greatness. I, 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 NinaTurner.com. Y'all go support this sister. Sister Turner, Senator Turner, thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Brother Ben. To you and the crew, too. Thank you all for what you're doing as well. Y'all shining bright lights. Thank you. God bless you. We'll be back, with like it or not, after this. I'm just cheesing over here. Thank you so much, Senator, uh, Senator Nina Turner, for joining us this morning. Let me know. Thanks for y'all in that drink.